The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. This is Chem 2045's Exam 1, Fall 2009, Problem 15. Consider the reaction MnO2 plus 4HCl yields MnCl2 plus Cl2 plus 2H2O9. If 0.86 moles of manganese, uh, manganese oxide and 48.2 grams of hydrochloric acid react, how many grams of Cl2 will be produced? Okay, we, I've written down the things that we know in a, a handy little column to the right. One of these is in moles and the other is in grams. Inconsistent. Let's fix that. What's a, what's a terrific unit to get to? Moles, because from moles you can go to moles of other species, you can go to grams of this species, you can go, you can do lots of stuff. So let's let's get this HCl into moles first. All right, setting up my grams HCl. I need grams HCl on the bottom. Need moles HCl on top. For every one mole HCl, I have 36.45 grams HCl. <coughs> this comes out to be 1.322 moles HCl. Okay. So now that I have my moles of HCl, I can compare it to my moles of MnO2. Okay. Um, this is kind of tricky, though. Both of these things are going to react together. The MnO2 and the HCl, they're going to react, react, react. Except one of these will run out. And that's the concept behind limiting, reag limiting reagent. So how do we figure out which one will run out? Well, the way that I like to think about it is I, I, I'm kind of slow. I like to think logically, you know. Um, I have to convince myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I have this much HCl, which, which is true, you know, this is um, how much I have. And you're like, oh, that's so simple, why'd you write it out? Because you'll forget, trust me. This is how much HCl I have, this is how much MnO2 I have. Then we could consider how much MnO2 would I need in order to react all of this that I have away. So the question now is, how much MnO2 do I need to react this way? All right, let's set up a proportion. If I have, uh, if I have, let's see, we're, we're looking for how much MnO2 I would need. Let's call that x, x moles of MnO2. Again, this is. Uh, theoretically, how much I'd need. Okay. Um, if so, so theoretically, that this is how I want to set up my proportion. I'm going to have moles of. Since I'm looking for how much MnO2 I need up here, I'm going to put moles of MnO2 up over here, and then I'm going to put the moles of HCl on the bottom. Because I can look at my equation, I can look at my equation. I say, oh, um, if I if I have four moles of HCl, then I just need one mole of MnO2, right? And then proportionally, if I have 1.322 moles HCl, then I would need this much MnO2, and so that's what I'm trying to figure out. Notice how my moles HCl on bottom, it, you know, they don't have to be on bottom. They could have been on top. So long as you can solve for x, it's fine. But keep your MnO2s both on top or both on bottom, and then just keep them together. All right, so if you solve this little proportionality, then uh, the amount of MnO2 that you would need turns out to be uh, 0.3305 moles of MnO2 required to completely react away the amount of HCl that I have. 
That's what doing this was for. So now we ask ourselves, do I have this much? In fact, I do. This is how much MnO2 I, I have. This is how much MnO2 I need. I have plenty of MnO2, which means it's not going to run out. Therefore, HCl must run out first. It's going to be the limiting reagent. Um, you can you can do this. You don't have to start out with the HCl. You could have started out with the MnO2. Um, you don't have to set up a proportionality like this. Turns out that this proportionality is actually a direct conversion. Um, if, for example, if I multiply this quantity over here, I'll rewrite it. HCl, and then I'm actually what I'm doing now. I'm going to write this conversion down here, because I've multiplied this thing over the other side. I'm actually converting my moles of HCl that I have. See how moles of HCl cancel? I'm actually converting them into theoretical moles of MnO2 required to react away all my HCl. And so then this would be you know, the same uh, 0.3305. Okay, so it turns out the proportionality that makes sense intuitively is actually the conversion, which now should make sense. So um, we know HCl is a limiting reagent. Therefore, let, we have to work with only the HCl. We're looking for grams of Cl2. So now I know how much Cl2 I potentially can make. So I'm going to start out with my limiting reagent, 322 moles HCl. And I'm going to convert this. I need to get to Cl2. So let's convert to uh, let's convert to moles of Cl2. I need my moles HCl on bottom for them to cancel. And then I ask myself, all right, for every four moles, or I ask, I ask myself, what's this mole to mole ratio? And I tell myself, because I like to talk to myself, four moles HCl to every one mole Cl2. Okay? But I'm looking for grams. Let's go one step further. I want to cancel out moles Cl2. Go to gram Cl2. Units cancel. For every one mole of Cl2, I have 70, what is it, 71.9? 70. Yeah, that's right. right. 70.9. Zero grams Cl2. There you go. Punch this out, and you get the final answer. 23.4 grams of CO2. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.